Welcome back to the Voice of My Beloved podcast, Braden and Tally Waller. We are continuing our series on the Song of Solomon. We are just making our way. Uh, we're just, we're just going to see every week how it goes, how far we get, and what we end up talking about. <laughs> um, we are on, we're still counting the Omer. We're on day 13 of the Omer here, just as a reminder. Keep on counting <laughs> as we get. Want to build up the expectancy, right? Oh yeah, yeah. We as can. it says in the book of Acts, they had fully come <laughs> yeah. to the day of Pentecost. They had yeah. been counting down the days, and they got to the day of Pentecost. Yep, yep. So we want to be expecting as we count that we're just. That it's so exciting that each day we need to count and and be aware of that we're getting one day closer. The whole idea is neat because, you know, like we count it down to our wedding, right? Uh-huh. You, know, we count, yeah. you count down to something you're looking forward to. Uh-huh. So uh, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit is something to look forward to. You know, yeah. that, celebrating that. Mm-hmm. The giving yeah. of God's word, something to look forward to. So uh-huh. do we count down the days? Yep. Yeah. And it's all, it is a picture even in the, um, with Shavuot, the whole, um, picture of the Ten Commandments being given and this covenant being made. It's a very bridal picture. And so, yeah, very relevant to to what we're talking about. We're counting down the days, um, counting up the days. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We're going on up. So we're going to get there. Day 50, it's coming. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And the day of the wedding is getting closer too. So we pray that uh, this that these podcasts are getting you more excited and s- sparking your um, your interest in counting the days till the wedding comes, counting the days to meet with our beloved bridegroom, because uh, that's, that's what this is all about. That's what this podcast is all about. That's what the... Um, these, you know, as we're going through this book, that's what, that's what we're focusing on is the excitement of a wedding that is coming and an excitement over the bridegroom that we have to look forward to, to, to meet. And so it's very, very exciting times. Um, we would love to hear from you if you, you know, we've mentioned a couple other times, but if you have any comments or questions or, uh, we're actually doing this podcast because, um, uh, we were, we've, you know, it's, it's a subject we talk about a lot, the Song of Solomon. And one of the people we shared with said, I think you guys should do a podcast on the Song of Solomon. And so we thought about it and we're like, yeah, that's, that sounds like it'd be a really good idea. And so um, our email address, loveandpurityministry at gmail.com. Uh, w- you can shoot us an email. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, go to the website, uh, loveandpurity.com and sign up for email updates because that's a, w- a good way to, to stay in touch. Uh, we will be holding events here eventually. It's going to happen. Lord willing. Lord willing. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, and we are hoping to, um, yeah, just really be able to invest more time into doing more recordings and music and being able to release some more things uh, to send out to the public uh, out there. And so if you get on the email list, that's your best way of staying up to date. And we try not to send out too many emails. So we, we, uh, yeah. And in the meantime, uh, we're going to, we're going to continue here on the podcast and we're going to do we're gonna get jump into this uh, study here with the Song of Solomon, which we've gotten through a whole two verses now. So now we're on verse number three. Yes. So here we go. <laughs> verse three. I'll just read the verse. It says because of the fragrance of your good oils, your name is oil poured forth. Therefore, the virgins love you. So I want to take this line by line. The first line there, because of the fragrance of your good oils, and so speaking to the bridegroom, the bride here says that the. The bridegroom has this fragrance of these good oils on him. And so we see a reference to that in Psalm 45, verse 7 and 8. This is one of my favorite psalms. Uh, speaking of the bridegroom king, he's coming. and But 
the in this it says that he's anointed. So it says, "You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. All your garments are scented with myrrh and aloes and cassia." One little side note: I was at a conference once, and someone had a little cloth that had these three oils actually poured on the sprinkled on this cloth, mm-hmm. and I could smell it. It was amazing. If you ever get the chance to smell. Myrrh, cassia, and aloes together. It was heavenly. It was pretty <laughs> amazing. But these are the the oils that are on his garments. And so when it says, because of the fragrance of your good oils, you can think about those three specifically, myrrh, aloes, and cassia. But uh, he's fragrant. And what we want to get into here with this is that fragrance speaks of the inner nature of something or someone. You know, Yeshua, Jesus, he has a fragrance just I can just imagine the people that were around him, they smelled something. There was something so attractive. The people that, you know, were followed him, you know, for mm-hmm. miles into the wilderness or wherever, you know, up in the mountains, wherever there there was they were following this fragrance that came out of him. Mm-hmm. And for us, you know, those out there listening, I pray that you're attracted to him as a person. The, not you know, there's there's two different things. There's one, he saved you, yes. That you know, you love him because he saved you and for, he forgave you. But that you'd also be attracted to him for who he is as a person, that he has a fragrance. And you know, when you smell a flower, mm-hmm. you, you hold up that flower and you smell the inside of it, right? And you, there's this fragrance that comes out from the inside. And so uh, that's a picture of who Yeshua is. He, he's fragrant. And you want to you wanna touch who he is, his inner nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's more than just a, uh, yeah, a visible thing or even yeah like what he does or something like this is this is like deeper than that this is like who how why he does what he does what makes him who he is this is the inner being of who he is um and and his love for us and why he's done what he's done for us uh, and so that, yeah, I love that, uh, that whole picture of the, the, the fragrance. It's, it's basically letting the, the innards, like the, the, mm-hmm. the thing that, uh, the thing that constitutes a person, it lets, <laughs> it lets that come out. <laughs> That's right. like the fragrance. Right. Yeah. And I just, I can't hardly pass up Psalm 45 where it just talks about him loving righteousness and hating wickedness. I, I see sometimes a nonchalant attitude towards wickedness because like, well, the grace of God is, you know, covered. but I just love this verse because it points out that the more we allow wickedness and compromise in our lives, the less of this anointing of oil of joy that we have. And so Yeshua, he has this oil he's he's just so anointed with his oil of gladness because he loves righteousness and hates wickedness Mm -hmm. and so i I, i'm praying that for me and you that we would have this same intensity that we would love righteousness the Mm -hmm. things that are righteous would attract us and wickedness would repulse us and we wouldn't just have this flirtatious relationship with wickedness and think oh you know just a little bit here and there Mm -hmm. no we want to hate it hate wickedness and this is what's going to lead us in this path of, of overflowing joy, overflowing abundant life in him. This is what, this is what we want to pursue. Mm-hmm. Yep. So uh, moving on, we know that we're actually, as Corinthians t- says, we are actually carrying this fragrance ourselves. It says uh, 2 Corinthians 2.14, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. So you and me, as we have him in us, this fragrance of who he is in us, then we're diffusing this where we yep. go. It says, for we are to God the fragrance of Messiah among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. And so we carry this, this thing on the inside. And I just, I just want to encourage us, you know, many of you out there are seeking to live a holy life and that has a, a picture, that has a, a fruit on the outside as well. It probably affects the way you dress. It probably affects the way you uh, you talk. Places you, places the places you go. you go. These things. things you but do. the heart behind it all, it should be from this inner place of this carrying the fragrance of who he is. You know, where we sometimes in the conservative world get things backwards is we can have all the outward things right. Mm-hmm. But then there can be this, you know, inward. Yeshua talks about, you know, if you've got the outward but not the inward, you're like a sepulcher right it's Uh like dead men's bones there's a stink in a way Uh but the true 
the true believer is one that that inner fragrance, that inner fragrance is something that comes out and it permeates his whole life. He does live a set apart. Mm-hmm. That person does live a set apart holy life, but because it's, it's something that of a work that was done on the inside. Mm-hmm. It's not that we're just trying to appear a certain way, but it's no, truly, I love righteousness and the depth of my being. I love God's holiness. And so I want to live a holy life. And so get those things mixed up and things can get really out of control. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, I'm looking at this and this seems to me, I'm like, wow, this is a really high calling because it's saying <laughs> that it's through us um, that he diffuses the fragrant, the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. I mean, that to me sounds like a really, a really a high, high calling, calling yeah. a high calling, a big job. Like he's counting on us to be the diffusers. <laughs> you know, I was, it's hard to not think of, you know, all the essential oils and stuff like that, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with, but you know, you see the little diffuser and, um, that, you know, you hook up the oil to the diffuser and then it releases the fragrance in the room. It releases the, that powerful, you know, uh, that powerful substance, the oil. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, we're kind of like the diffusers. <laughs> like, <laughs> like we have this oil, like Yeshua, he's got this fragrance and it's up to us to diffuse it. <laughs> and so, and, and I mean, that's just, yeah, that's just a crazy thing to think about. And just that, you know, that we are to God, the fragrance of Messiah. That's, uh, yeah. When we go to yeah. worship, it's, you know, there's a fragrance that comes up, you know, he talks about uh-huh. the, the, offering right that it's you know bringing this fragrant aroma but we are to god that fragrance as we accept yeshua into our lives Mm -hmm. then we're when we go to worship when we're living our lives our lives should be a worship to him we're we're diffusing that fragrance of worship even to god yeah yep yeah and here even in the verse talking about among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing and so i I just think that's uh it really gives us a i mean i think all of us have felt that you know when we're around people that are truly you know have the messiah dwelling in them that they're like people that you want to be around you know Mm -hmm. they're people that that are really going to encourage you and lift you up and and um and there's a there is, there's like a fragrance. It's like, you know, you just want to be there. You just want to be there because there's Yeshua in these people. And I just, I love, I love this verse. I just think it's, <laughs> it's really neat. I love the whole picture of it. Cause, um, I don't know. I just, I just think it's a, it's such a, it's such a big thing. It's such a weighty thing. And in, and it's talking about among those who are perishing. And so even as we go out, I think that gives us a lot of um, purpose in going out and diffusing that fragrance, um, you know, out when we're out shopping, when we're out um, doing anything, you know, that, that we're going to be around people that we have this opportunity to diffuse the fragrance of Messiah. And that just is an awesome thing. Yeah. So the next line in the verse, it says, your name is oil poured forth. So I'll read this together. So because of the fragrance of your good oils, your name is oil poured forth. So his name being that oil. So you have the fragrance of the oil and then you have the actual oil. And this speaks of the substance of who he is. You know, he, he speaks and the world is created. You know, he, his name, his name carries power. It's like oil poured forth. It, not only does it have a fragrance of who he is in his inner nature, but it also has a substance. It has a, a power to heal. It has a power to change people's lives. And so because of this, of who he is on the inside, you could say, because of the fragrance of who, who he is, he is also able to impact the, the physical world as well. Mm-hmm. So his name is oil poured forth. And, uh, yeah, you know, just, uh, thinking of that, you know, that this is so poetic, you know, his name, the, the character of who he is, is like oil poured forth. It's, it's got this, um, it's anointing oil. You know, his name is, is an anointing. It's, it's a powerful, it's a healing name. His mm-hmm. name is oil poured forth. Mm-hmm. And then it goes on to say, therefore the virgins love you. And I just love this passage. You know, virgins speak of those who are undefiled by the world. And, and those who have been redeemed and washed, right? You know, someone that is living an unclean life can get washed and made a virgin in his sight, can, can receive that, that total cleansing. The old things passed away, all things becoming new. You can be a virgin before him, but the virgins love him because of these things, because of who he is, his, the inner workings of his heart, how much he loves 
The virgins love, love him because of the power of his name. The mm-hmm. virgins love him. In 2 Corinthians 11, 2, Paul says, for I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. He, Paul had this you know, the father's heart toward the Corinthians. He said, I, I've got this jealousy for you. I, I want to you know, watch out for you, basically. He says, for I have betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So Paul, his whole burning desire for the Corinthians was that he would present them one day as a chaste virgin. Mm-hmm. And so just, this is something to ponder. What what is a virgin love? You know, as, as we seek that virginity mm-hmm. uh, as believers, that we're not, you know, as James says, don't be spotted by the world. Don't mm-hmm. be defiled. But, you know, seek that that pure religion, you know, that's mm-hmm. that's uh, visiting the fathers and the widows in their affliction and then also staying unspotted from the world. And so this is the, this is the idea of being a chaste virgin. Mm-hmm. So the virgins love him. May you out there, as you seek that, as you're, as you're walking in that place of just wanting to be set apart for your bridegroom at his coming, may you just grow in that appreciation of the essence of who he is. And may you continue to uh, draw near to him in that place of worship and, and continue to just receive of who he is. You know, re- just mm-hmm. breathe in that fragrance of who he is. Mm-hmm. And, and this is the thing that's going to make you love him more. You know, mm-hmm. the, the, he's, he's got fragrance. He's, he's, his name is powerful. And so you're going to love him, the virgins. Therefore, it's because of these things. Therefore, the virgins love him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I also thinking of the, you know, I think it's when, um, when we end up getting spotted by the world, or where uh, the the voice of the accuser comes in and tries to make us look at spots or you know past spots that that uh, that have been on us. I think that's what keeps us uh, from even understanding the fragrance of Messiah as well. You know, it seems like that's, you know, but when we understand our, um, how clean and washed we are in him, that it draws us to that fragrance and it draws us to, um, to that oil that's being poured forth as well. Yeah. Next verse, verse four says, draw me away, draw me the way the bride is longing to be drawn away into more of who our king is to, to grow in intimacy with him. It says, draw me away. We will run after you. So here we see a singular, right? Draw me away. And this should be the heart cry of every believer. You know, Yeshua, draw me away, draw me to you. You know, uh, oftentimes we get in a kind of a corporate, uh, overall, and we don't take on the individual relationship that we should have. Mm-hmm. And, but it, it ends up affecting the overall, you know, mm-hmm. if people are just like counting on the pastor to have a relationship with God for them, you know, mm-hmm. no, you personally, you tell your bridegroom, draw me away. You know, just take that into your prayer life. Oh, Yeshua, draw me away. I want to draw near to you. It says in Psalms seventy three twenty eight, but it is good for me to draw near to God. It's something so good to draw near to God. Make this your personal prayer. And then the effect of that is we will run after you when each individual makes it their prayer and their heart's goal Mm -hmm. to run, to to be drawn, to Mm -hmm. be drawn to the bridegroom. Then corporately we run after him. Mm -hmm. We, we all seek him together too. Right. Mm -hmm. But it, but it so enhances it. If you get together with a bunch of believers that are individually praying that prayer, you, then you get together and you can really run and seeking God. You can't stop them. (laughs) Right. So uh, this is a a powerful life to live, just that place of being drawn Mm -hmm. and uh, what we want to pursue. Next verse is, the king has brought me into his chambers. I just want to point out in this verse how it's the king. The king is the one who, he has rules for his kingdom, right? A king is powerful. And the bride here recognizes it's the king who has brought me into his chambers. And, And so in the beginning, we're at the first chapter of Song of Solomon. There's this concept here of the bride is continuing this journey of intimacy with the king and but she recognizes his authority in the beginning you know there's that place in the believer's life where yeshua is lord and and that means i'm obeying him right mm-hmm. and so the king when it's when she says here the king has brought me into his chambers she's recognizing his authority over her life and so just that as an encouragement out there realize he is the king he has the ability to to make rules. He has the ability to set boundaries for our lives. And it's in this place of walking in that place of him being the king in our lives that we're brought into his chambers. 
we're mm-hmm. brought closer into relationship with him. Mm-hmm. So we have the verse in Psalm 91. It says, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. So here Psalms referring to the same thing, the secret place, this chamber. And this is the place we want to be found is dwelling in the secret place of the most high. Mm-hmm. She's an, you know, basically the bridegroom is, is answering the prayer. She said, draw me away. And then the, the bridegroom, okay, yes, come. I'm going to bring you into my chambers. I'm going to allow you to c- get close. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is this is what God wants to do. He wants to to draw us close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's uh, it, she's still um, kind of referring to him in this. It's not you have brought me into your chambers yet. You know, this is still, I think she's still in awe at this point. Like, it's like the king has brought me into his chambers. <laughs> right. Like, like I think she's still even like, not even sure how to, you know, approach him, you know, yet. <laughs> it uh-huh. seems like she, they're still in that, that, that place in the story where she's still in awe of it. Like the king, right? <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think there's a, a time where it becomes more, you know, more intimate even like. <laughs> right. Yeah. So then moving on to the next verse, we will be glad and rejoice in you. And just want to point out, this is a declaration. We will be glad and rejoice in you. And just want to say this whole revelation of God's heart, of his love for his people is a source of great joy. When you realize, when it touches you in the depth of your being, that God loves you mm-hmm. as a man and woman in love, you know, that, that, that bridegroom revelation, it causes joy. We will be glad and rejoice in you. When you smell the fragrance that he has, when you are brought into his chambers, that's going to be a place of joy and gladness. Mm -hmm. You know, love is, uh, it brings forth joy. It gives birth to joy. The fruit of the spirit is love and then joy follows, right? Mm -hmm. So love, when, when you experience love, then joy is a it's, it's something that's going to follow that. Mm-hmm. So we will be glad and rejoice in you. I love that point that it's, it's rejoicing and being glad in God. And that's what the scripture says, you know, uh, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Mm-hmm. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Or you could also mm-hmm. translate it. We will rejoice and be glad in him. Mm-hmm. That verse can be translated that way as well. So, uh, but yeah, just, you know, realizing God's called us to live a life of joy. And it's as we meditate on his love, it's as we uh, grow close to him that we, we grow in joy as well. We, ha- we have the joy of the Lord. And that we see in Revelation 19, 7, it says, let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come. This whole revelation of the bridegroom king, it's here in Revelation, it's let us be glad and rejoice. There's so much joy surrounding this, mm-hmm. this, this marriage. It says, um, let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. So the wife is going to be made ready. The people of God are going to be ready for this marriage. And that's going to be a day of great joy. I've been to many weddings and they're, they're joyous occasions, but this wedding is, oh, it's going to be, the joy <laughs> is going to be incredible. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm even thinking of, you know, the, the verses about rejoicing uh, when trials come, mm-hmm. which we've talked about <laughs> quite a bit. Um, but it's, it's a decision, you know, it's like I, we will be glad and rejoice in you. It's a, it's a stance you take in life. (laughs) You know, it's like, I will rejoice. And I think that, um, I think that this is the place, this is the, the reason we can be confident in saying that we will rejoice is because of that there's a truth that will never be swayed. And that is our, um, our, our love relationship with our heavenly bridegroom. Like that's the thing that it can't be shaken. It can't be moved. And so I know I will rejoice. You know, there's no question in my mind. It doesn't even matter if I fall into trials, you know, but the, the joy that is before us, that's, you know, that that's a sure thing. That's a sure thing that yeah. we can count on. Yeah. Amen. So we also have Proverbs thirty-one twenty-five. It says, "Strength and honor are her clothing; she shall rejoice in time to come." Mm-hmm. Proverbs thirty-one is a is also a great uh, chapter speaking of the bride. You know, so many yeah. descriptions of who the bride is, and, you know, and, spe- and it also has talks about who the bridegroom is. Some, mm-hmm. and so uh, you know, she shall rejoice. There's mm-hmm. a confidence there. You know, and you look at the world today, and one of the reasons why people get uh, they get depressed, they get they get overwhelmed. They get they get on start getting on medications, you know, to try to control depression and things. It's because they they lose hope for the future. 
Mm-hmm. They lose hope for what will be. You know, with all this coronavirus going on right now, people are wrestling with oh, what's going to happen with the bride. She's assured. She's so trusting and confident she is going to rejoice in time to come Mm -hmm. and you know if if we set our hearts on this coming reality that our bridegroom is coming then we have reason to rejoice Mm -hmm. we don't have to worry about the future yes we'll go through hard times but there's something that is set there's something we can look forward to something Mm -hmm. yeah it's not a uh, it's not a wimpy bride we're not called to be wimpy brides (laughs) this is here is even strength and honor are her clothing We, we need to be clothed in strength and honor. Um, and that's, you know, and then we'll rejoice in time to come. Sometimes you need a lot of strength to be joyful. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so moving along to the next verse, we will remember your love more than wine. So we had earlier, you know, that his love is better than wine, but now it's coming back to this whole wine symbol. We will remember your love more than wine. Mm-hmm. And so, as we mentioned before in the previous podcast, wine speaks of the, the joys, the, the, the glamour, whatever, you know, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The exhilaration mm-hmm. of this world's pleasures. Mm-hmm. And, but so we, but here, this verse is going back to that theme, that theme. And it says, we will remember your love more than wine. Mm-hmm. So more than, than all the good times we've had, more than all the pleasures we've experienced in this world, we're going to remember his love more than that. Mm-hmm. We will remember your love more than wine. And so I encourage you, think about the love of God. Think about the ways that he has redeemed you and saved you. Think about the cross. Think about Yeshua hanging on the cross for you. Remember that love. Don't let it become a faint Mm -hmm. and obscure memory. We will remember your love more than wine. Mm -hmm. It should be the most memorable thing that we have in our hearts, Mm -hmm. the power of his love. And then the next line, it says, rightly do they love you. I love this line. It's like there's such a rightness about loving the bridegroom. Mm-hmm. rightly do they love you. It's the right thing to do to live a life of loving God. It's the reason we were created was mm-hmm. to live a life of love toward God, to keep, you know, to, to honor his word, to say, God, I want to love you with my whole life. I want to live a wholehearted life of obedience. Rightly do they love you. When the bride realizes how powerful his name is, when they realize how fragrant and sweet the beauty of his inner person is, mm-hmm. oh, it's so Right. It's so right to give myself wholly to him. The world looks on and says, they think, Peter says, they think it's strange. It's so strange that they don't <laughs> run with us, you know, because we're, you know, they, they make it look like they're living the life, right? Right, right. <laughs> but, uh, but once you've tasted who he is, then it's so right. You know, the rightly do the virgins love you. Rightly do they love you. They, he, it's so good. It's so right to love him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Amen. I think we're going to sign off for this week. And we will see you next week with the next portion here, Song of Solomon. So uh, this is Brayden and Tally reminding you to listen to the voice of your beloved bridegroom. He's coming quickly. When by the blood of the Lamb we all stand and cry.